Hey everyone and welcome back to Help Me GMB. Today's video is a really important one because we're going to dig into one of the most trusted and respected roles in the pharmaceutical industry and that's the QP or qualified person. Now if you've ever wondered what a QP actually does, what it takes to become one or why this role is so critical to patient safety, you're in the right place. Let's dive in. Okay, so first things first, what is a QP? A qualified person is legally responsible for certifying that each batch of a medicinal product is safe, high quality and made according to strict regulatory standards before it's released to the market. In simple terms, if the QP doesn't sign it off, the product doesn't move. It's as simple as that. And this is not just a company policy, it's a legal requirement under UK and EU law. In the UK, the role is defined under the Human Medicines Regulations 2012, and there is equivalent legislation across Europe originating from what's commonly known as the Human Medicines Directive. All right, now let's get into the real nuts and bolts. What does a QP actually do day to day? I'm gonna break it down into some key areas. Batch certification. This is the bread and butter of being a QP. A QP is responsible for ensuring everything about a batch meets the required standards. This includes starting materials, manufacturing processes, in-process controls, testing data, deviations, change controls, cappers, regulatory compliance, the list goes on. Checking that at every stage, the requirements of GMP, the marketing authorization and the manufacturing license are all met. Only after we're 100% satisfied will a QP certify a batch. Usually with a dated signature or an electronic release or sometimes signing in a physical register. Now you might be thinking, how long does that take? Honestly, it depends. Some batches can be straightforward. Others can take days of investigations and risk assessments, especially if there's been a deviation. Speaking of deviations, no manufacturing process is perfect, right? Deviations happen, and this is where QPs really earn their keep. The QP gets involved with any deviations to establish, is the batch still safe? Was the deviation fully investigated to an appropriate point to support release? Has the deviation resulted in regulatory non-compliance? Have the right corrective actions been taken? Are we confident the root cause has been identified and appropriate preventive actions been assigned? If there's a non-compliance with the regulatory submissions like the marketing authorization or the batch fails to meet the required standard, the QP will refuse to certify the batch. What about inspections? Would you expect a QP to be in attendance with the heads of quality and heads of production? Of course you would. They're named on the manufacturing license and have a vested interest in ensuring the inspection goes smoothly. Being front and center in inspections is key to a QP's role. When the MHRA or other regulator comes knocking, they often ask for the QP by name. They'll quiz the QP on individual batch release decisions, deviations, training records, GMP understanding, you name it. The QP's confidence and competence can make or break an inspection. And trust me, inspectors can smell indecision or hesitation a mile away. They'll expect QPs to be sharp and be able to defend their decision. And trust me, inspectors can smell hesitation or indecision a mile away. They'll expect QPs to be sharp and be able to defend their batch release decision based on evidence documented in the quality system. But it's not just about individual batches. QPs are present in pharmaceutical manufacturing companies to be the eyes and ears of the regulators. They often shape how the company handles change controls, training, deviation management, validation and qualification. They are personally and legally accountable for their decisions. So they have a big say in the design and maintenance of the pharmaceutical quality system or PQS. Basically, they don't just manage quality, they live it. Okay, let's have a quick overview of the main tools in a QP's toolbox. Batch manufacturing records or BMRs, the full recipe or history of every batch. Deviation reports explaining what went wrong, its impact and how it was fixed. Change controls, managing any change to materials, processes, 
or equipment, quality control test results for raw materials, in-process tests, drug substance and drug product. Kappa Systems, where we manage and track our corrective actions and preventive actions. Training records to evidence that people making or testing the medicine are properly trained. Audit reports, both internal and external inspections to identify areas of weakness. And risk assessments, a fundamental part of quality risk management. And believe me, if there's something missing, regulators will definitely notice. All right, let's talk about you. If you want to be a QP one day, what do you need? Firstly, the academic requirements. Usually a degree in pharmacy, chemistry, biology, or biochemistry, or a related degree, you'll also need additional specific QP training depending on your experience, covering things like GMP, clinical trials, pharmaceutical law, and different types of production techniques. Then you'll also need to meet the experience requirements. You must prove you have extensive experience in pharmaceutical manufacturing, testing and quality systems, at least two years for most applicants, but in reality, it's often far longer than that. You can't just do a course and call yourself a QP. You'll usually need years of real world experience first. So what about the application and the assessment process? In the UK, you have to be assessed by the joint professional bodies made up of the Royal Pharmaceutical Society, the Royal Society of Biology and the Royal Society of Chemistry. Once your sponsor has approved your extensive application form and it's accepted, the assessment is in the form of an interview or viva, where you'll be grilled nicely on your knowledge and decision making skills. There's some essential soft skills that prospective QPs need an unshakable attention to detail, the ability to stay calm under pressure, good judgment, you'll be required to make the final call on tricky batch decisions, and leadership and communication skills. You'll have to be able to challenge people respectfully and guide teams towards GMP compliance. And yes, sometimes that means saying no, when a lot of people want you to say yes. You've got to have a strong character and a clear moral compass. The good news? Once you're an eligible QP, you're highly respected and you'll have a ton of options. You can move up into roles like Director of Quality, VP of Regulatory Affairs or even General Manager. You can specialise, maybe in clinical trials, biologics or cell and gene therapy. You can consult. Freelance QPs are in demand and can earn very good money. And you can work globally. QPs are highly valued in the UK, Europe, and even in Australia, Singapore, and beyond, even where that territory may not legally need a QP. Plus, you'll always have job security, because companies can't release products without you. Look, at the end of the day, the QP is the final safety net between a medicine and a patient. When you certify a batch, you're personally vouching that it's safe and meets the required standards. You're protecting people you'll never meet, patients trusting their lives to those medicines. It's a huge responsibility, but take it from me, it's also one of the most rewarding careers you can have in the pharmaceutical industry. If you love quality, you love detail, and you want to make a real difference, think seriously about aiming to become a qualified person. Thanks so much for watching today. Make sure you hit like, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more deep dives into GMP careers and compliance tips. See you next time on Help Me GMP.